Hi, I'm Anthony for Sydney Backyard Veggies. This week I'm going to be doing a few more plantings in my winter patch. I'm going to be planting a few more cabbages and a number of winter greens. But before I do that, I just wanted to come and show you my main brassica bed and where it's at. Um, it's been in the ground now for about two and a half months and it's looking really good. I'll bring it up closer and show you how my plants are progressing. This is the main bed and I did a video earlier where I planted this out and I'll share it in the in the description notes uh, my cauliflowers are looking absolutely amazing I'm just having a quite close look at them at the moment and I'm feeling that they are starting to form heads as you can see there the initial stages of head formation is starting they're starting to wrap around which is looking really promising um, coming over to my red cabbage and green cabbages and this is what I pruned their outer leaves and added additional fertilizer and again looking really good heads are starting to start to form up but they're just still a bit loose so they've still got another no, i reckon six weeks to go before they really are uh, ready to harvest and then finally i've got my broccolis and again i've been harvesting these progressively they're in the shade here of the lemon tree so they're not doing overly great here but they are producing i am slowly harvesting the heads and this bed yeah i'm going to be cleared in about another two to three weeks so that's an update of my main brassica patch now i'm going to go through and plant out the back half of the main bed with more uh, winter greens and cabbages back out in the patch this afternoon and i'm over near my pea plantings that i planted out in the last video and i've pulled out what I had there previously was the old uh, eggplants which I've pulled out and I'm going to be continuing on planting my winter veggies in this spot. What I am looking at planting here today is my next planting of cabbages. Now I generally like to get my last planting in late May. I don't want to go any later than that and because I had run out of time I've decided to go and invest in some uh, seedlings and this variety here is called sugar sweet and but look at things and reading uh, reviews online they seem to be an okay uh, crop to grow okay variety to grow um, dug over the plot and i'm going to be planting these out in rows 40 centimeters apart in spacings in 40 centimeters but what i was going to do over now is just go set those rows in and then come through and plant them now i've got two punnets so i'm hoping to get two to three rows in and after that i've got a few other seedlings i want to plant out Coming through to plant the cabbages, just going to separate the seedlings and just make sure there's a little bit of soil around each of the bases. There you go. Now it's going to plant them about 40 centimeter spacings using the standard technique. Next on my list of plants to plant in this bed is my this season's uh, silver beet. I am running really late with these at the moment. Again, I would have liked to have had these in the ground about March, but I'll get them in now and hopefully uh, if there's, if there's enough sun, a bit of warmth still in the weather, they might be able to do really, really well. These ones will be planted in the rows at 20 centimeter spacings. I will try to get eight to 10 plants in and I'm hoping that they will, will produce all the way to the end of November when they should start, when they should bolt. But it's a nice staple to have in your garden. Uh, very hungry plants, so make sure you have a lot of compost and manure in the ground. And they will be fed um, chicken manure pellets and potentially some sulfate of ammonia just to really get them going earlier in the um, planting.
the last thing I want to plant now in that bed um, is curly leaf kale. Um, we don't use much of this in my household, but it's nice to, on occasions, to have it in salad and to also make juices out of it. So uh, rather than spending money to buy them from the shops, I've decided to plant just a few plants in there. I might plant half a punnet just to finish off that last row. And hopefully this one should produce, hopefully if the right conditions, I should be getting a fortnightly pick of um, leaves of, this, of these plants and that would be fine for us all the way into spring. So I'm gonna go plant these out and then I'll show you the final result. So finished playing off those seedlings and now this is what my bed looks like. I've got myself two, pair, um, two rows of cabbages and a few scragglers over there. Then I've got my row and I would argue half of silver beet and then I've got my curly leaf cowl in the back. Now I'm going to come through and give these a water and just uh, in about a week I'll give them their fertilizer but for now these are fine as they are and I'll keep you posted on how they uh, produce and how they grow throughout the season. So I'm back out at that patch this afternoon and I'm going to continue doing some more winter plantings. Now just behind me those are the cabbages and the silver beet that I planted earlier in the week but now I'm coming over and I'm going to continue planting along the bed but this time I'm over to get rid of last season's basil uh, here sitting underneath this mango tree and I'm going to plant lettuces in this spot so I'm going to come through just clear that um, clear out the basil feed it to chickens come prepare the soil here and I'll plant out my lettuces just to freshen up the soil here, I'm going to add a, a bit of um, homemade compost, but I'm also going to add just a little bit more of the dynamic lifter pellets just to give it a little bit more nitrogen because the lettuces are going to need it and they're going to respond really well to it. So just emptying compost and a little bit of chicken manure pellets and all I'll do is I'll mix this in and then I'll be ready to plant. In this pl space I'm going to be planting oak leaf lettuce. I got these gifted by my auntie and she raised them as seedlings. Just bringing them out and they're looking a bit worse for wear but they will bounce back. There's about half a dozen seedlings in here and what I'll do is I'll get rid of all those old damaged leaves and plant them out and they should do quite well. They are suffering a bit from a little bit of rot, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna go plant these out and I'll probably set them out at about 20 centimeter spacings in um, the bed. Just giving them enough space for them to grow in and just make sure they're well watered once I plant them out. So I'm gonna go plant them out now and we'll see what it looks like. Now the seedlings are planted, I'm just going to come through my water, watering can and just make sure they're all well watered in and then they should be fine. Now this is not too much of a sunny spot so they won't get too impacted by the harsh sun, midday sun, but I'm hoping that they start really responding to being in the ground and I'll add a bit more fertilizer in about two weeks time, really get them going. Hopefully I'll have them harvested in about eight weeks time. So these aren't, these can be pick and come back, but generally speaking, I will be using these as a heading uh, lettuce. I'll harvest the whole lot and I'll take it in. So now that I've finished planting my lettuces, I want to show you something over at my Wombok patch and I'll just bring you over. And if you can see that, these are my, my Wombok plantings just behind me, but I want to show you something particular that's happening to my plants and show you how they look like at the moment. Just come and show you my one box. And my one box are looking quite good and they actually are starting to fill out a fair bit. But what I'm getting is a lot of, I'm not sure if you can see that, a lot of rot around the base. Now some of them are okay, but I have lost a few plants to 
rot and I'll bring you closer to show you what the rot looks like. So just coming over here and you can just see that one is just starting to suffer a rot. And now um, I find this happens when there's a lot of water around the plants and generally speaking uh, we had a lot of rain about three two months ago and it's really impacted on these plants still doing okay but to uh, combat the rot that's slowly killing these plants i've actually taken the irrigation off them so i'll be watering by hand and i'm hoping to harvest these in the next two weeks or so because i just need to get them out before they fully rot um, so that's unfortunate but that's what happens when you get wet seasons and you can see i have been struggling a bit with if you could just bring it up there i have been struggling a little bit with pest pressure but i think feeling them they've still got a really firm head so i'm going to be be harvesting some half decent one box i do have more seedlings that i will be planting out but when you are planting chinese cabbage you really want to make sure you stay on top of the amount of water they get because it does encourage the, the heads to rot which is what something you don't want and before i wrap up this video i'm just over at my chicken pen and over the last few weeks the chickens have been getting into their eggs and eating them to a point where i actually haven't been able to collect any eggs so i've come over to the nest boxes and i've decided to um, make some modifications to the nest box to get the eggs to roll away and i'll quickly show you what that what i've done and how i've set it out so this is the nest box and i'm actually accessing the nest box from the outside which is quite useful um, originally they would lay their eggs straight on the floor but at the moment they to prevent them from eating it i've decided to add in a new timber to angle the floor back to the back and the idea is is that the egg once it gets laid it will roll back and get caught in the space behind and the chickens can't get to it now this is a dividing wall that will stop the chickens from accessing this and i'm hoping that it will save me from having to buy um eggs so uh, just testing it out with an egg that they laid earlier in today and hopefully tomorrow i will find that they've that it works and i'll be getting uh more eggs and from the front of the uh, nest box this is inside this is near the roosting sections i've gone and put in a bit of a, a curtain which actually adds a bit more of that darkness to the space and it will encourage the chickens to feel comfortable and lay in there and i'm hoping that my egg eating problems will be taken care of if you can just go through there you can just see that's the the nest box in there so hoping this will resolve my problems and just to say hello to my ladies if you can see those those are my chickens are a combination of eyes of browns some australops and a few um chickens i just hatched from one of my uh broody hens but they're doing okay um i'm hoping you guys need to start getting back to start laying again they are molting pretty hard at the moment so i'm only getting three or four eggs a day but most of them have been eaten hopefully that next box nest box change will resolve that issue thank you very much everyone for joining me this video i really appreciate all the support and i hope to see you in the next one